Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be part two of common lies. Common lies that preachers, teachers, ministers, and pastors and churches teach. Turn your Bible to 1st chapter of the well the book of first john chapter two and we'll start there my little children these things write i unto you that we sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the propitiation of our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world and thereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Oh, so what are the commandments of Christ? Let's take a look. Well, to find that, you got to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 22. Verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer... This was a, a doctor of the law. That's what a lawyer means. Asked him a question, tempting him and saying. Uh, he's trying to trick him. That's what tempting him means. I'm going to ask this Jesus a question and try to trip him up. See what he says. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang, hang all the law and the prophets. Did you read anything about there about keeping Sabbath? or feast days, or, um, no, I didn't either. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him, Jesus, if we keep his commandments. There's only two. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And obviously, if you love your neighbor, you're not going to commit murder. If you love the Lord, you're not going to commit adultery. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to commit uh, adultery with, his, with your neighbor's wife. I mean, you know, that's, that's keeping the commandments, you know. Now, it's a good idea if you want to keep the Sabbath day holy and not do any work and do your Bible studies on that day, I say all, oh, go for it. I, 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 I think that's the greatest thing you can do, one of the greatest things you could do, besides loving the Lord and loving thy neighbor. So, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, ah, keeping the words of Jesus in your mind and in your mouth, but whoso, whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. The love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought, also, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is a word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in, in, and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, 
and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And what's his name's sake? Jesus, not Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh, you don't believe me. Matthew chapter 1, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away private, private, privily. You know, I mean, how do you feel? You haven't touched your wife and she gets pregnant. I mean, you know. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach? No. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the prophet, uh, of the Lord by the prophet. So, when people tell you his name's Yeshua, what they're doing is they're denying the book of Matthew. They're denying the book of Mark, Luke, John. They're denying the New Testament. They're denying Jesus is what they're doing. And who are these people? Well, we're Let's go back to 1 John chapter 2, and we're going to find out who these people are. Verse 12, 1 John chapter 2, 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I don't think your sins are going to be forgiven in Yeshua HaMashiach. I don't think so. I mean, I might be wrong, but I know Jesus. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known... Uh, let's see, didn't I just read this? Oh, okay, it's re verse 13 and 14 look the same. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him... That is, from the beginning, I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world. Didn't we just read in uh, uh, part 1, for uh, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But verse 15 says, Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That, people, is the pathology of sin. Sin, you know, the breaking of God's laws. What is pathology? It's the study of the... Uh, ology means study of. And path, you know, you're, you're studying the path of sin. What You know, the road that leads you down to sin. For all that, for all that is, is in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's, that's it. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, oh yeah, there's going to, Antichrist is going to come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that this, that it is the last time. Hmm. And if you don't believe me, there's millions of them in New York City. Los Angeles, and in the Israeli state. There's millions of antichrists. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest. They were not all of us. 
but ye have an unction of, uh, from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Now here's the definition of an antichrist. Verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So if you deny that Jesus is the Christ, you're antichrist. And not only uh, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So when you deny the Son, you're denying the Father that sent the Son. You've heard teach, uh, churches say, well, you know, Jesus deny that Jesus is the Christ, but they have the Father. No, they don't. Unless you say 1 John chapter 2 is in error. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. And if you don't think Jews are antichrist, call the local synagogue and ask them if Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. They'll say, no, we don't believe that. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning, if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need, know, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, that's the Holy Spirit, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that every one that doeth righteousness is born of him. Another lie of the church, that the Antichrist Jews are God's chosen people. I mean, how can the Antichrist be God's chosen people, but believing Christians are not? I can't figure that one out. What's the next lie, common lie of a church? That God would never deceive people. Why, God would never deceive people. Really? Are you so sure about that? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day is second coming? For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Do you know what perdition means? It means to fall. This son of perdition, he was born to fall. And that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I'm telling you, people, Snakes are born snakes, serpents are born serpents, dragons are born dragons, goats are born goats, and that's how it works. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the, that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, with all power, and signs, and lying wonders. You're talking about miracles here, people. 
and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this God, I'm sorry, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God is going to send them a strong delusion. He's going to make He's going to make them believe that a lie is the truth. Look up the word delusion. I'm not making this up, people. And for this God cause, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, these are people that love their sin more than they love God. And they had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's why God's going to send them strong delusion that they're going to believe a lie. So, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks all way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you Oh boy, there's that election thing that they hate. You know why they hate election? Because they don't want you to believe that people that believe and have faith in Christ are God's chosen people. They would rather you believe that the Antichrists are God's chosen people. Common lies that preachers tell. They're liars, and may the Lord give them their eternal uh a reward. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Because God hath chosen from the beginning hath, I'm sorry, because God hath from the beginning, beginning, why can't I talk today? Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. God chose you. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Guess what, people? It's just like on the phone. You know, somebody has to call you and then you got to pick it up you got to answer the call. That's what they say, whosoever will. You know, just because you want to answer the phone for somebody to call you, if they don't call you, you can't answer the phone. That's how it works. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by epistle, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. All right, open up your King James Bibles to the Old Testament. We're going to go to the uh, book of Kings, first chapter, uh, first Book of Kings, chapter 22, verse 1. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, the king of Judah, jumping Jehoshaphat. You ever heard that expression? That Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. Now, how can Judah and Israel be the same people if the king of Israel came to see the king of Judah, uh, uh, king of Judah came to see the king of Israel? What? Common lies that preachers tell you. Well, Jews and Israel is the same thing. No, it's not. God divorced Israel. God didn't divorce Judah. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. 
And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye not that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still and take it not out of the hands, uh, out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy people. Now Jehoshaphat was a good king. But the king of Israel was evil. Evil. A rotten, wicked, you name it, he was. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? So Jehoshaphat, the good king, probably smelled a rat. He says, Wait a minute, you got all these prophets here, but, I, you know, isn't there another? All right, so. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imiah, oh, I'm sorry, Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Well, Duh, the king of Israel's evil. Of course he's not going to like the prophet of the Lord because the Lord's going to punish you for your evil. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chinanah, made him horns of iron, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push the, uh, the Assyrians until thou hast consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. You ever hear that song? Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. I think that was, uh, I forget, Stevie Nicks and them, or... Fleetwood Mac, I think. I don't know. I don't listen to that stuff. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. I'm sure he said this in a mocking voice. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? And he said, Oh yeah, you want to hear the truth? Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as, as sheep, that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting. Now here that is the prophet is speaking. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. 
I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go and fall at Ramoth-Gilead? Now, who's Ahab? Ahab's bad news, people. Matter of fact, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 30. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Hmm. Wow. Second Chronicles 22.4 Therefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord like the house of Ahab. Don't be like Ahab. Verse, let's go back to 1 Kings 22, 20. And the Lord's, okay, so let's go to 19. And he said, Hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And when they're talking about fall, they're talking about him falling to the ground dead. So who's going to persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, another said on that manner. And there and there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? In other words, oh, you're going to persuade him. How? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit. L-Y-I-N-G. I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he, God, and he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail. Go forth and do so. Now this is Micaiah the prophet speaking. Now therefore behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. So would the Lord deceive wicked people? By making them believe things that are not true? If the Lord would send a lying spirit unto a wicked king like Ahab, if he would send a strong delusion, you had better believe that God will deceive the wicked. He will absolutely, positively do it. And people say, I've heard churches and pastors and preachers say, oh, well, God would never lie to us. Well, maybe he wouldn't directly, but he'll send a lying spirit to deceive you. You know why? Because you love unrighteousness and evil and wickedness more than you love the Lord. When you love the Lord with more than anything else in this world, with all your heart, I will guarantee you the Lord will not deceive you. Absolutely will not. And, and if you're concerned about your sin, you're in a good shape. When you're not concerned about your sin anymore, you're in a bad way. Let me tell you something. I've met sodomites from San Francisco, and they go to church and absolutely believe that they are saved. God made us homosexuals, they will say. And we are saved. God made us that way, and we can, we can perform sodomy every night. I'm with my committed lover, and uh, they're absolutely positive, 100%, that they're saved. That they don't, they can be, they're, that they're going to be saved in their sodomy. God puts a lying spirit in the mouth 
of their preachers and lets them believe a lie for their unrighteousness. I'm serious. It's happened. I've seen it. So, all right. Well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, signing off. This is the end of part two. There is no part three. This is the end of this series, Common Lies Taught by the Churches. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to him. In Jesus' name, amen.